okay yeah mm-hmm. and then uh, sometimes we see like in that case also we had seen like the planet is in libra like sun we saw an example it was virgo tama but it was in libra yeah so how to reconcile that if it is so the virgo tama will still give knowledge but the nature will cause either misfortune or good fortune depending on what that sun is doing in the rashi chart all right yeah so for example if i recall that was meena lagna and jupiter was in fair so the aruda lagna is in scorpio and uh, the that's in ninth house and the sun is in the eighth house so that's 12 from the aruda lagna and it's joined the 11th lord from the aruda lagna mercury which means that kid is going to be very wealthy another rich person yeah and another question regarding this only like many people say that we study conjunctions in the navamsha differently or some say we study the same way so we do not see that is that. partly right you differently because you sometimes need to see what that planet is loading in rashi chart yes but it's still conjoined okay. planets are conjoined all right so we will always treat oh these are joined they're going to influence each other this is very important um let's say you want to see profession so so moon is showing 10th from moon shows profession that's what the shastras say what you do is you take 10th lord from moon in the rashi chart and see that planet in the navamsha whatever it is joined wherever sign it is placed in that will be your profession all right so you hope you benefit that, from the profession yes yes and regarding this arudha lagna they have a concept that arudha lagna is only because it's physical that it should only be seen in the lagna chart so do we have arudhas for the divisional charts also and we do yes for we do. what does it mean and how do you calculate the arudha lagna there um uh, this is a long debate long debate okay? okay you can do both you can make a new aruda for the navamsha all right that only tells you what your spouse thinks about you okay only it's only for that navamsha as soon as you leave your, as soon as you leave home that that aruda fails to work okay the thing is let us say you have an aruda let let's give a example a d24 okay siddhamsha for education let's say you have an aruda lagna over there which is calculated from the d24 lagna now what happens when you're not in school anymore aruda is finished okay it's out it's done unless you go back to the school it yeah. the aruda stay in the school it's staying over there okay. okay you don't take it with you home you don't take it into your marriage you don't take it to your job so the problem is if you calculate an aruda in a varga it stays in the varga but you need to have that aruda of the varga if you're going to if the person is in the varga okay if you are in a job your reputation in the job is important right okay but as soon as you retire it's not important but you spent maybe your years from 20 till age 60 in that job so for 40 years at least that aruda is important all right but then the question is what we are interested in also as astrologers what is that aruda which keeps going on from birth to birth on and on again and again throughout life in all our endeavors all the time it's the aruda lagna of rashi chart okay i see and that aruda you have to calculate no you have to see which sign it is in and see that sign in all 16 divisional charts same sign if i have a ruda lagna in pisces i will see pisces in all 16 divisional charts it will supersede and just dominate over the varga that aruda even in d60 it will be relevant that is called swa aruda wow is a very spiritual concept behind that very spiritual and it's the real meaning of the swa aruda that parashara talks about in the parashara hora shastra he speaks of swa aruda and its importance this is this aruda from the rashi chart swa aruda yeah and now one more thing people always keep asking is like how do we see the nature of the spouse that is more from the lagna or from the d9 Because always d9. it's d9 always yeah okay no doubt Seven thousand in the Lagna chart in Rashi chart is what I whom I want to marry. I just said Sun is in seventh in Rashi chart. You might be homosexual. What does that mean? It's nothing to do with the spouse. <laughs> oh, okay. it's what you want. Attitude. Okay, yes. 
So whatever is in seven in the Lagna or Rashi chart, that is what you want in marriage. Okay, in fact, your entire attitude towards marriage is seen from that. What is your attitude? Maybe you have a bad attitude, right? Okay, so that we have to see there. The seventh Lord is what the spouse is, but it doesn't really define their character. Okay. You need to see seventh in Nabamsha for that. That is whom the spouse is. After all, I, you know, you asked me this question and you, I sort of hinted at the answer. You want to know who, how your boss is, right? Who is your boss? Where is your boss? So then you go to your job to find your boss, right? That is detention. That's where the boss is. Your boss is yeah. not at home with you, right? It's yeah. a detention. So D10, ninth house, I will see my boss. D10, ninth house. If I want to see my teacher in school, I go to D24 and see ninth house. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Okay, these are, if I leave school, the teacher is not coming with me. If I leave job, my boss is not necessarily coming with me. He might be on the phone with me, right? But in Navamsha, the reason for the confusion is, is because your spouse is at home and is with you everywhere, right? <laughs> oh. So people get confused. But the truth is, let's say you divorce and you're leaving the institution of marriage and taking sannyas. You're leaving your Navamsha and going away from Navamsha. So you're leaving your spouse also. So spouse is in the Navamsha. You can leave the spouse also, right? We hope you don't, but it's there, right? So, so the Navamsha, seventh house is the distinct spouse you're marrying. First spouse, second spouse, second house, third spouse, ninth house, fourth spouse, fourth house, fifth spouse, eleventh house, like that, go on, every eight. We hope only one. Yeah, because you said that the placement of Venus will decide the first spouse. That, that is not that is not our spouse. That is my love that I receive. Okay. What am I getting? Is All Venus right. in the Mamsha. Who she or he is that I marry is the seventh house in Navamsha. Oh, okay. Yes. So I have two things to look at in Navamsha. Seventh house, who they are. I can see, I can treat that house as Lagna and see tenth they're from their profession, ninth they're from their father, fourth they're from their mother, third and eleventh they're elder and younger sibling. The whole thing we can see. Just treat that as Lagna. But what I get is Venus. What I get from that partner is Venus. Fantastic. And one last question I would ask that many people are interested in moksha and spirituality and all this. Or you can take astrology or anything spiritual related to God and divinity. So uh, can you share some of your good, uh, some at least some placements which can show that the person is very spiritual or? Yes, you need to use Rashi chart for that first. Um, the story is that uh, the, the student is asking the teacher, teacher, why are we focusing on form all the time? God is formless. Why are we focusing on form? And the, the, the student keeps arguing with the teacher, arguing with the teacher. And then the teacher says, okay. And he calms down a bit, and, uh, 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 acting as if the discussion is over. He doesn't want to answer anymore, and he's tired. Then a few minutes pass, and the teacher says, um, go get us some fire. Mm -hmm. You heard of the story, maybe. The student goes out and gets the wood, lights the wood, put on fire and comes into the ho home house and says, I have some fire for us, teacher. He says, no, no, I don't want the wood. I said fire. <laughs> and the student is confused. I cannot bring you fire without the wood. He said, now you understand. We need Rashi chart to start. Okay. The fire is in the Vargas, but the wood is in the Rashi chart. So first we need the wood. Now, distinctly, the fire is in the D20 chart. Now, the wood. Whatever you, uh, the, the person is uh, supposed to worship, there is a principle given in, uh, which Samhita is this? Geranda Samhita. It's a yoga Samhita called Geranda Samhita. It speaks of that the, um, that the first thing you have to figure out for the student of yoga and this means any yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, karma yoga, right? Man mantra yoga. First thing you do is you figure out, should they worship guru or should they worship God? Number one, first principle. And so then the, what is the method we use in Jyotish to figure this out? Your lagna lord, lagnesha, is everything that you respond to. 
It, it shows what you are responding to and what you can see. And it is the tendrils from this lagnesha which is supporting every thought that you have that is in your mind. So before you do any other examination of spirituality, you must first see the lagnesha to see will this mind or brain be inclined to spiritual thoughts. And there are two criteria here to see those thoughts. Number one, you see the kendra from the lagnesha and you see, is the 12th lord of lagna placed in kendra to lagnesh? 12th lord of lagna placed in kendra to lagnesh. Yes. Wow. 12th lord from lagna, obviously. Yes. So if it is not in kendra to lagnesh, the person is not having a natural inclination to devata. Okay. It's not there. Okay. So then you have the second option. All right. If 12th Lord is not there, then see 9th Lord instead of 12th Lord. All right. Is it in Kendra to Lagnesh? All right. This may still give some Devata Bhakti. This may still, but it's not the same as 12th Lord. All right. Already now I'm bending the rules. Now, these are for Devata Bhakti, God Bhakti. So, if you cannot get that, then see, is the Guru, Karaka, Guru, is he in Kendra to Lagnesh? Guru means Jupiter. Jupiter. Okay. Jupiter. Is Jupiter in Kendra to Lagnesh? Then it is Guru Bhakti. Wow. So first you make this decision. Is it 12th Lord? Maybe 9th Lord. Or is it Guru? Okay. Which is in Kendra to Lagnesha? That which is in Kendra to Lagnesha, worship that. You are inclined to that. All right. That is natural for you. You do that, you will achieve your spiritual goal. And this also implies if it is 12th Lord in Kendra to Lagnesha, the person really believes in God. Truly, utterly believes in God and is ready for Devata Bhakti. All right. If it is Jupiter and Kendra to Lagnesha, they truly believe in Guru. All right. And they're ready for Guru Bhakti. They need Guru Mantra. Mm -hmm. And so this is the first distinction you make. If you can see that, the person is spiritual. The difference is with Jupiter, it's not spirituality, it is wisdom. These are the ones highly analytical, always thinking, under, trying to understand the world, the universe, thinking, 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 thinking. And if you show them the, 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 the wood, they will go for the flame. But at first, they may not be very spiritual, but they can become with time. All right. What if Guru is like Nesha? <laughs> There's some things we need to learn there. Then you look at Moon instead. Okay, and in the in the Navamsa, there are some things like this say that if Ketu is in the twelfth from the Lagna or from the Atma Karaka, these are questions you'll find in YouTube. That that is one of the very strong indicators of moksha or liberation or very high spiritual progress. It may not give focus, but it can give moksha. Okay. Focus was already what I just did, the principle, like nation. That's exactly. your focus. Exactly. But you can still be in, uh, having the opportunity for moksha. So yes, um, the principles are as follows. Atma jnana comes from the first or ninth from Karakamsha. Moksha, Jivan Mukta is the 12th and 4th from Karakamsha. If Ketu is in any of these, there is the possibility. So Atma Gyan, Ketu in 1st or 9th from Karakamsha. Moksha, Ketu in 4th or 12th from Karakamsha. However, it's not guaranteed. There must be other combinations to guarantee it. So one has to learn the other combinations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and this is, I promise, this is the last question <laughs> because I forgot to ask this. What about dashas? We, how do we, I mean, of course, not in a broad spectrum, but can we use the same Vimshotri dasha and see in the Navamsha? Vimshotri is perfect for Navamsha. It is almost, it's almost made for Navamsha. The nine dashas in Vimshotri dasha are actually made for the nine amshas. The Navamsha. So some people they'll do first Mahadasha is Lagna, second Mahadasha is second house, third Mahadasha is third house, and they'll read depending on the Dasha what is the house. You don't have to do what I just showed. This is a very efficient method and is used in the Nadis. Okay, 
This is the main method of the Nadi Shastra. Um, you can also just see what is the Graha, all right? For example, if you are going through the Dasha of your 8th Lord or 8,000 Navamsha, marriage is trouble, in trouble. During that Dasha, you can divorce. Okay. Similarly, if you're running the Dasha of the 7,000 Navamsha, you can marry. Okay. There are a few more houses which can give marriage, 7th and 4th, both. But 8th house, be careful. You run that Dasha, you can have divorce. What if you're not divorced and the Dasha of the second house comes? You ought to meet your second spouse before the first marriage is over. All right? So yes, it works very well in Navamsha. 10th house Dasha in Navamsha, you're about to earn wealth. All right? In fact, all the things that I've mentioned so far, I took one Graha, looked at it, saw it, Rashi, Navamsha, all that. What you should end up doing is see what is your Anta Dasha and see that Graha in that way. That's Why Anta Dasha? Because Anta Dasha are the people you meet. Maha Dasha is you. Anta Dasha are the people you meet. Okay. <laughs> this is like never ending. It can keep going on and on. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I don't have words to say. I mean, this is the first time I think the, thank you. these secrets thank you. are coming out. And mm -hmm. yes, uh, whoever has not watched the other parts, they can watch it. It's almost been 10, 10 to 9 to 11 parts, I guess. Goodness. And uh, if you want a consultation from him, which I forgot to say, you can always go to his website. I will give the uh, link to his website down mm -hmm. in the comments and in the description. Yes. All right. So thank you very much. We are. It was my pleasure, Babajit. <laughs> Looking forward to doing it again. Namaskar. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much.